Hey folks, Dr. Joe here. Odd time to be doing a podcast, isn't it? Well, we had to go. I had to go cover uh, one of my other clinics today, so that's why I had, I've been running a little, little behind here, which is fine. Uh, welcome, first time joining us. The way we do this is we do two, two 24 minute segments. So I will talk for 24 minutes about the topic we have today, which is a good topic. Then, if you have any healthcare questions, type them in, and Joe, my producer behind the camera we will then read the questions to me, I will answer them, and then we do the second 24 minute segment, and then we answer more questions. So this is a great chance for you to get your health questions answered and also interact with other folks. So it's kind of fun the way we do these podcasts. And then this audio is then used on WSBB 98 and 97.1 in the river in Atlanta. Uh, it's the Sunday morning show. So if you listen to the podcast, you'll hear it again on Sunday morning. So, but people on Sunday mornings don't know that. They think I'm live, but I don't tell them I'm live. I, when, they tell, when they ask me, I tell them, nope, this is recorded. So I am ready to go when you are, Joe. Ready? Hey, folks, Dr. Joe Esposito here. I am so glad you're here today. What we're going to talk about today are the things that you need to eliminate for better health. I have 10 here. I don't know if I'm going to get to all 10. But the 10 things you need to eliminate for better health. And the reason I'm doing this show, and, and every time I do a show, there's a reason behind it is that people come to me and say, Dr. Joe, I can't do everything you say to do. It's too much. I've already had patients not come see us for a year or longer. And when they finally come in, they say, I've been meaning to come see you for a long time, but I was afraid of what you were going to tell me. I can't give up blank, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, whatever it is. And I tell them, listen, you don't have to give up everything. Let's just start with a few things. Let's make some changes. See how positive that is, move on to the next thing, move on to the next thing. So everything we're talking about today falls under that category. You don't have to do it all. At least do something. And every time you make a little positive step and you see the progress, you get excited and you say, okay, I can do the next step. It really isn't hard. It really isn't. So I've been doing this now for about, well, 37 years in practice, you know, I don't know, clinical app before that. So let's say 40 years round, roundabout. For 40 years, I've had one goal. My goal is to naturally get you well and keep you well. See the play on words there? Naturally get you well and keep you well. And naturally, I want to get you well and keep you well. So I've been doing it for a long time. Every day of my life, I'm researching. There's not a day that goes by if I'm on vacation, if I'm uh, out of town, if I'm in town. I'm always researching to bring you the most current research that's out there so that you can incorporate it into your life. 60% of Americans say that they want to feel better. And yet, according to one survey, 2.7 actually meet the definition of living a healthy lifestyle. So patients come to me all the time, and they say, Dr. Joe, I eat really well. And I say, okay. And then we look at what they're eating. Had a gal come in the other day, young gal, athlete, dancer, uh, in great shape, and she came in for shoulder pain. So I talked about the digestive system. She goes, oh, yeah, I have irritable bowel syndrome. I said, what are you doing for it? She goes, well, the doctor wanted to put me on medication. She goes, I'm only 22 years old. I don't want to do that. I said, okay, and I explained the nerves in the low back, control the bowels, and I said, you got to give up wheat and dairy products. Those cause inflammatory bowel issues. And at the end of the consultation, she said, I've been a doctor since I can remember. Nobody has ever given me things to do aside from take medication. You're the first doctor that ever gave me any action steps. And she got a little teary-eyed, and she goes, I'm real excited about this. She goes, I would love to not have to take Imodium every day. She had diarrhea every day. And I thought, wouldn't that be nice a 22-year-old girl is able to, I don't know, go on a date, go out with her friends, go partying, and not have to worry about getting diarrhea? So I'm not against medication. I'm fine with medication. Take it if you need it. I take it if I need it. But let's always try to get to the cause of the problem, not just treat the symptoms. Okay? So it can be overwhelming. Sometimes people say, you know, I, my eating habits, I can't change them, my physical activities. I had a lady come in the other day really sick. And she said, I can't eat right because I'm busy. So I kind of very smugly, jokingly said, all right, let me tell you what I did today. And I listed all the things I did that day. And I said, and this is what I ate. I said, so why can't you do that? She goes, well, I guess if you put it that way. I always just assume I'm too busy, so I just eat fast food. I said, no, fast food can be healthy food too. You just have to, I don't know, make it yourself or bring it from home. So what we're going to talk about today, straightforward, powerful strategies that can dramatically affect your health, even if you just take one step at a time. First one, I don't think I've ever talked about this one before. I want you, I've briefly cut it, 
talked about it. I want you to cut out omega-6 fatty acids. It's called linolenic acid, and it's primarily found in what's called polyunsaturated fats. Now, you've heard me talk about saturated fats, usually from meat, butter, cheese, yogurt, eggs, ice cream. And the saturated fats can be bad. But polyunsaturated fats, years ago, um, there was a big push, and they said polyunsaturated fats are good. But polyunsaturated fats are, om are omega-6 fatty acids. Omega-6 fatty acids must be balanced with omega-3 fatty acids. It, ideally, you'd have a one-to-one -one ratio of omega-3 to omega-6 fatty acids. I take a Dr. Joe's omega-3 supplement every day because uh, it's an essential fatty acid. You have to get omega-3 fatty acids from an outside source. You can't just produce them yourself. So you can get them from foods, flaxseed oils, certain, uh, even romaine lettuce has a little omega-3 fatty acids in it. But omega-6 fatty acids, if it's one-to-one -one, or even three omega-6s to one omega-3, th uh, that's okay. Most people are about 15 to 20 omega-6 fatty acids to one omega-3. That is very, very bad for you. Most of the omega-6 fatty acids oxidize, and they create something called hydroperoxides, and that they rapidly degrade from there, and they break down into acid metabolites. That's where the danger comes in because they're unstable. Most of the times they're oxidized, they're already gone bad, and they are cytogenic, which means they can cause cancer. They're mutagenic, they can mutate cells, um, and they can even affect your blood vessels. Most people are sucking down vegetable oils like crazy, and it's not good for them. And so I want you to think about that, that we may not want to have vegetable oils in our diet. Now, I'm Italian. I use a little bit of olive oil. It's not a great choice. It's not a health food. However, I always say if that's the biggest sin you have, it's okay. You don't have to be perfect. I don't have to be perfect. If I use olive oil, it's got to be extra virgin organic. And I'll tell you how to test that in a second. So metabolic dysfunction can occur, and these oxidized toxins can get into the liver, and they cause inflammation, they can cause liver disease. The essential, the omega-6 fatty acids are found virtually in every processed food. That's restaurant food, sausage, salad dressings. And it's really hard to eliminate from your diet, especially if you're going to go out to eat. If you go out to eat, the chances are extremely high that there's omega-6 fatty acids in it. Now, if you're eating a plant-based diet, fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds, and a little bit of linoleic acid gets into your diet, you have omega-3s in your diet, and so it can kind of help offset it. Now, if you go to a restaurant, you want to be really strict. You want to make sure they cook only with coconut oil, which is a saturated fat. It's a weekly saturated fat. It's, it's a long story. That's one of the better ones to use, avocado oil. I don't know of any restaurants that are going to do that because they're expensive. Avocado oils and things like this are expensive. So chances are they're not going to do that. So don't lose your mind over it. If you have a little bit here and there and you're living everything else of your life good, it's probably okay. Now, animals, if you're eating animals, you say, well, Dr. Joe, I don't eat vegetable oils. I just eat car – I'm a carnivore. Animals are fed grains that are high in omega-6 fatty acids. And so you're eating a healthy food like chicken, uh, pork, the other white meat. These meats are a major source of omega-6 fatty acids as well, as well as saturated fats. So uh, another reason not to eat animal products. But if you do eat animal products, I want to make sure they're organic only. Don't eat any animal products that are not organic. The best choice is to not eat animal products. Okay, I haven't had animal products in 35 years. That being said, it doesn't mean that you have to be as extreme as I am. Extreme in a good way. I remember years ago, somebody fixed me up on a blind date. And we went out, and there was no chemistry there whatsoever. And afterwards, she told the person I fixed this up, she goes, I can't go out with him anymore. He doesn't eat meat. And I thought, what a strange – and she was a veterinarian, which I thought was kind of strange because, wait a minute. You're a veterinarian. I'm not eating your client. She should be happy. But you don't have to make a big deal out of eating a healthy diet. You just have to say, this is what I'm going to order. Nobody cares what you eat as long as you don't care what they eat. Now, it may come up in a conversation, hey, Dr. Joe, why are you doing this? And I'm pretty well-versed, and I can dodge the conversation if I need to uh, because many times if I'm at a business meeting or whatever, if I'm at a family event, I don't need to make what I eat center of attention. You go to a wedding, you don't need to be a center of attention. The bride and the groom are. So you don't have to make a big deal out of it. Just make better choices.
So cutting out those omega-6 fatty acids is going to be huge. Now, if you buy olive oil, what you want to do is take the olive oil, put it in the refrigerator, leave it there overnight. Take it out the next morning. It should be cloudy. If it's not cloudy, it's not pure olive oil. So what's happening now is many, most companies, I think, I think over 50%, I think it was the last study I saw, are mixing the olive oil with other oils and selling it as olive oil. Well, it's cheaper. Olive oils are expensive. So if it doesn't get cloudy, what you do is you take the bottle, take it back to the store, save your receipt, go to the return desk and say, this is not olive oil. And it, I, I tested it. It's not olive oil, so I'd like to have my money back. And the reason I tell you to do that is the store then is going to say, wait a minute. We're, because the stores just sell stuff. They don't manufacture it. So they then could make a better decision when they're dealing with other vendors to make a better choice. So really, it's just that simple. Another thing I want you to cut back or cut out of your life is eating too late at night. And this is a big issue. The timing of your meals is really important because you want to give your body a chance to rest. Romance is the number one energy consumer we have as humans. The number two energy consumer is digestion. And if I'm going to eat right before I go to bed, that's bad for several reasons. Number one, the calories or the food I eat in the morning is burned up more efficiently, about 30% more efficiently than food I eat at night. So if we're trying to lose weight, eating less at night is a good choice. If we're trying to maintain weight, which we all are, eating late at night, not a good idea. Also, when you lay down, your stomach can push up against your diaphragm. Now, your stomach sits below the diaphragm, and you swallow food. It goes into it, There's a little hole in your diaphragm. It opens. Food drops in. It closes. You digest food. You pass it on to your small intestine. That's normal. What can happen is your stomach can push up into the diaphragm. If the stomach pushes up into the diaphragm, you might have acid reflux, heartburn, burping, gas, bloating. Now, if you've listened to my shows before, uh, we talk about adjusting or pulling the stomach down away from the diaphragm. And my team of doctors are really good at that. 85% of the patients I've tested in my career have digestive problems. Many times the problem is physical, not chemical. And the traditional way of treating things is treat it all chemical. I'm going to give you prednisone. I'm going to give you an antibiotic. I'm going to give you a, an anti-inflammatory. The problem is the stomach is up against the diaphragm. So we need to physically massage it back down. In most cases, the results are spectacular. People love it when you adjust their stomach. I love when I get my stomach adjusted. Sometimes I just feel fat. I feel bloated. I'm like, I didn't eat anything bad. I had salad yesterday. Inevitably, my stomach is up against my diaphragm. I grab one of my doctors. They pull the stomach down, and life is good. So many times there's a physical issue. But if you're eating late at night, when you lay down, you don't have gravity pulling the stomach down away from the diaphragm. So when you lay down, the stomach pushes or slides up into the diaphragm, and that can cause the acid reflux and the heartburn. It can also cause snoring. It can also cause sleep apnea. It could also cause you not to digest your food properly so the proteins aren't being broken down into amino acids, and amino acids become neurotransmitters in the brain and other parts of the cells. And now it has an adverse effect on your brain function. Everything is affected. So you want to give yourself about three, four hours between eating and bedtime. Now, I've done it before. I've eaten late. I'm not going to lie to you. But most of the time, I like to eat light. I like to eat early. And then if I can, get out my day. So if you eat at 6 o'clock and you go to bed at 10 or 11, eh, that's probably okay. The earlier you eat, the better off you're going to be. So the timing of your meals are really important. And that's something you have 100% control over. I was just talking to somebody at the station the other day, uh, the meteorologist, Christine. And she said, because uh, uh, a lot of people weird, work weird hours. A lot of times in radio and television, you get up at 2 in the morning, 3 in the morning to go to work. And she said, yeah, I was being really bad. I was eating before I went to bed. She goes, now I have my last meal at about 2 o'clock in the afternoon, go to bed about 6 o'clock, and then I feel much better. So it really does work. And that's something you want to stop doing in your life is eating late. Now, another thing I want you to stop doing is stop suffering. If you have neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, headaches, numbness, tingling, the acid reflux we just talked about, come see us. My team of doctors and I are really good at helping people naturally get well and stay well. So if you'd like to make an appointment, we have offices in the Atlanta area, Marietta, Duluth, Stockbridge, and West Cobb. We would love 
to be your doctors. We would love the opportunity to work with you to try to get to the cause of your healthcare problems, not just treat the symptoms. And that's what many people do. I am not against treating symptoms. I'm against treating symptoms and not also getting to the cause. So if you'd like to make an appointment, it, it, whatever your health issue is, neck pain, back pain, digestive issues, drjoe.com, drjoe.com, make an appointment right online. You can call us if you want. The number's all over the website. And we get you booked. Initially, the first visit is normally $720. The initial visit. I said initially the first visit. That's redundant. First visit is $712. We've reduced that to $299 for my listeners and anyone you refer. That's an exam, x-rays, consultation, first treatment, going over the x-rays, and a complete nutrition evaluation. Anywhere else you go, the x-rays alone are going to cost you more than that. The reason we do this is because we want to find out if it's something we think we can help. If it is, we'll say, hey, we think we can help it. No promises, no guarantees. If we can't help you, we're able to say then, you know what, you're not within our wheelhouse, our scope of practice. Let me refer you to this orthopedist, neurologist, neurosurgeon, psychiatrist, whatever it is. We're happy to refer out. Doctors refer to us all the time. It's how the game is played in the healthcare field. So if you'd like to make an appointment, stop suffering. Make the appointment right now. Bring your friends, your family, your children. And if you're ever in a car accident, please come see us immediately. The longer you wait, if it's not your fault, it can adversely affect your claim. The insurance companies will play all sorts of games. You didn't go to the doctor. You weren't hurt. We're going to deny your claim. But even if you cause the accident, you're still hurt. The longer you wait, the harder it is to fix the problem. So if you're serious about wanting to get healthy, drjoe.com, we would love the opportunity for you to come see us. So we're talking today about things I want you to stop doing to make your life a lot better. Cell phones. This is a biggie. Most cell phones have this little known warning. And if you read the little packet that comes with it, my friend Clark Howard calls it mice type. It's so tiny. You read that packet, and it says, in most cases, keep the phone from 5 to 15 millimeters away from your body. That's not a lot, 5 to 15 millimeters. But it's telling you, don't touch this phone to your body. It's right in the direction. Why is that? Phones re produce something called electromagnetic frequencies, EMFs. Electromagnetic frequencies can get into your body and can cause adverse side effects. They can increase the temperature of your brain. So if you're holding the phone next to your ear and talking like most people do, not us because I don't, and you're talking all the time, you increase the temperature in your brain and it can start to kill off brain cells. If you're a child, your, brain, your skull is a lot thinner, higher incident of damage from electromagnetic frequencies. Let's assume you're a guy like me. And you carry your cell phone in your front pocket. What are you next to? Your reproductive organs. Electromagnetic frequencies can have adverse effects on your reproductive organs. Let's assume you're a lady. And you take the cell phone, you put it in your bra. When we do that, raise your hands if you do. I know a lot of you do. I see it. You're putting electromagnetic frequency right next to very sensitive breast tissue. And it's radiation. It can adversely affect it. So what I want you to do are several things. Number one, I want you to use a headset to talk with, a wired headset. Let me say it again, a wired headset, not this you know, stuff that's wireless, because that actually increases the electromagnetic frequency by sending the messages from your phone into that wireless earpiece. Wired headset, I have one in my house, I have one in my car. Or just talk on speakerphone. Don't put the phone directly touching your body. Now, there's a challenge because we walk around. Now, ladies, or men, I guess, I can't be, I can't, I've got to be binary sensitive here. Put the phone in your purse. Gentlemen, if you're going to put the phone anywhere on your body, put it in your back pocket, not your front pocket. Don't put it in your shirt pocket. What's right there? Your heart. So if you have to put it, put it in your back pocket and try to get it out of your pocket as quickly as possible. If you're okay with cargo shorts, put them in the front pocket of your cargo shorts. It's away from the genitals. So don't put the phone in direct contact, and please don't let children hold the phone next to their ears. So dangerous for children. And again, it's not even saying it has to be you know, far away. The further away, the better. 
But uh, Deborah Davis, PhD, founder and president of the Environmental Health Trust, has warned for years the risks of cell phone in general, but in particular about the risk with pregnant women and unborn children, noting that prenatal animal studies have shown exposure to radiation from cell phones can alter their DNA, alter their brain metabolism, compromise their spinal cords, and affect learning abilities. Now, these studies were done on animals, not humans. I've said this many times. I wouldn't take the chance. Let's assume cell phones are totally safe. And you can put them next to your ear, put them next to your genitals. It doesn't matter. There's no harm in not doing that. I always say if you go to Las Vegas and there's a bet that says you're going to break even or win, would you take that bet? All day, every day. I'm giving you these things. Yes, there's studies showing both sides. If there's studies, and I lean toward the negatives, because I've read a lot more negatives than positives, just go ahead and be safe with that. Research conducted by the National Toxicology Program found that clear evidence, in quotes, that exposure to cell phone radiation led to heart murmurs in male rats, along with some evidence that caused brain and adrenal gland tumors. Now, I don't want you to eliminate your cell phone altogether, but these are things you can do to make it safer. What I do is when I set my alarm on my phone, I put it on the other side of my room. And if I sleep to my alarm, most times I don't, I wake up earlier. But if I sleep to my alarm, I have to get out of bed right away. That's not fun. It's better than having electromagnetic frequency next to my head all night. So try to get the cell phone as far away as you can. Drives me nuts when people sleep with their cell phones. Hurts me to see them doing it. Artificial sweeteners, another thing you want to cut out of your life now. Consuming artificial sweeteners uh, disrupts your metabolism. It's been linked to increased appetites and cravings, as well as increased risk of diabetes and other metabolic diseases. Aspartame breaks into aspartic acid, phenylalanine, and methyl esters when it's heated. Aspartic acid is an excitotoxin to the brain. It causes the brain to fire faster than it's supposed to. Phenylalanine can cause kidney damage if you're phenylketonuria, if you have phenylketonuria, which is a condition where you can't process phenylalanine. And then methyl esters. Methyl esters is methanol. Methanol is wood alcohol. You're drinking alcohol when you drink artificial sweeteners. Now, very low amounts, very, very small amounts. But how many of you drink artificial sweetener every day? It's in over 7,000 products. And if you're putting artificial sweetener in your body every single day, it's having an adverse effect on you. There's no question that it has an adverse effect. So I really want you to cut out the artificial sweeteners as quickly as possible. It also interferes with your liver's detoxification process, and research found that it inhibits the activity of something called P-glycoprotein. Now, P-glycoprotein is a defense protein, and it's important in protecting the organism against environmental toxins. It's preventing your body from protecting itself, and that comes from uh, acylfame K and sucralose. Sucralose also is an endocrine disruptor. Sucralose acts like estrogen in the body. Most of us don't need more estrogen. We need less estrogen. Estrogen causes abnormal cell growth. So I really want you to stay away from the artificial sweeteners. Total cancer risk increased by 13% among artificial sweetener consumers. Risk of breast cancer rose 22%. Risk of obesity increased 15%. Once again, it's not like it's either nothing or good. It's bad. So why would you do these things? Now, you can use other things. You can use stevia. You can use lohan. Uh, you can use erythritol, xylitol. There are other sweeteners, but here's what's going to happen. When you start changing your diet, when you start eating better, your cravings for sugar go away, and you're going to be able to avoid those bad foods more and more. Got to go to break, folks. Do me a favor. I'll be back. Do me a favor. If you have any questions, send them to me through my website, drjoe.com. Drjoe.com has over 3,000 hours of podcasts. You can book appointments there. You can order supplements there. I'll answer questions for you. A little bot pops up. Just type in your question with your email. I'll get back to you. I want you to follow us on social media. This is important because I gave away tickets. I gave away several hundred tickets to a live event I was giving the other day. People on social media got those free tickets. So it's at Dr. Joe Esposito. The, uh, at the symbol Dr. Joe Esposito. It's Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, Twitch. We give away things all the time, so there's a benefit to doing it, and we also give you a lot of good health information. So follow us on social media, at Dr. Joe Esposito. 
And for your podcast junkie, just type in Dr. Joe for the health of it in your podcast service. Dr. Joe for the health of it. We have hundreds of hours of podcasts there. But the website to contact us and make appointments, Dr. Joe, D-R-J-O-E dot com. One down. What do you have? What do you have? All right. I got a question for you. It's coming up this week. It is a, uh, an awareness day. Uh, what do we got? Uh, chronic fatigue syndrome. What would you recommend for somebody that has been diagnosed with chronic fatigue syndrome? Okay. We see a lot of chronic fatigue syndrome patients, and in most cases, we get amazingly good results. And I've had many, many patients, countless patients, cry in my treatment rooms thanking us for the amazing results. And this happens on a regular basis. We probably have at least one or two patients a day crying, thanking us for the re- results that they got. Uh, not just chronic fatigue, for everything. So chronic fatigue, got to cut out the seven deadly sins. Alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, and artificial sweetener. Got to cut those out. Go to the website, drjoe.com, type in seven deadly sins. Listen to the show we did on those topics. Then listen to a show called So What Can I Eat? And that talks about what you can eat. So it tells you what not to eat, what to eat. Supplement-wise, super greens an essential source, minimum supplements everybody should be doing every single day. Nitric oxide, Dr. Joe's nitric oxide is amazing for energy and many, many other benefits. So I would take, start with two, then maybe take three the next day, four the next day, see how you feel. It not, may not happen overnight. If you can do four without feeling bad, just stick with four and do that every day. I take it in the morning. Adrenal support, most chronic fatigue patients have burned out adrenal glands. So adrenal support and B-complex. Super green, essential source, nitric oxide, B-complex, adrenal support. Cut out the seven deadly sins. Eat more fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds, and then also come see us. Chronic fatigue can be due to the nervous system essentially just short-circuiting. And in many cases, you need chiropractic care to realign everything. We may have to adjust your stomach, and then the results in most cases are dramatic, to say the least. So we have an answer for that, I think. So, What else? What is your treatment for mold exposure? Somebody just sent me that question. I sent you an answer to that. Oh, well, they asked to hear it, too. Oh, you want to hear it, too? Uh, same thing I just told the other person. Cut out the seven deadly sins, eat more fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds, and with mold exposure, build up the immune system. So supplement-wise, super greens an essential source, vitamin D, glutathione, probiotics. Vitamin D, glutathione, probiotics, super greens an essential source to build up the immune system. And then, of course, remediate the mold. you got to get the mold out of your life. But if you sent me that question through the website, I just sent you an answer. It should be on your email. If you didn't get it, let us know. But listen to the show we did on immunity because we talk about how to build up the immune system. And mold exposure is tough because it gets into a lot of the cells in the body. If you do nothing, which is an option, it's going to cause some real serious damage in most cases. So you might want to you know, listen to the show on what to eat, what not to eat, immunity, and then take supplements. And then in most cases, you should be fine. And then come see us, too, as always, so we can check if see if there's anything else. So. What else? All right. This was not a question, but I'll answer it anyways. Right. Where do you get free tickets? That's for aliveexpo.com. When you pick your tickets, put in the code 22DRJOE, and then it'll change the general admission to free. Yes, and this, the lecture is on May... 14th. 14th Saturday, yeah. Saturday at 2 p.m. So if you're listening to this as a replay... Oh, by the way, if you're listening live, type in hashtag live right now, if you would. And if you're listening to us on a replay, type in hashtag replay. This way the bots know that you, what you're doing and we can get more people following us. So hashtag live right now if you're listening. Hashtag replay if it's not right now. We're not live. So, but Dr. Joe will be hashtag live on Saturday at 2 p.m. 2 p.m. At uh, Cobb Galleria. Yes. So if you're listening to the show after May 14th. 14th? Yes. Yes. Well, then it happened already. So, but we have a lot of free giveaways, and that's why you want to follow us on social media. So there you go. What else? All right. Here is a question, though. Is coconut water good for you? It's a lot of sugar. Um, I wouldn't drink it as a daily basis. It's a whole lot of sugar. So it's okay, but it's tons of sugar. So I'll say no. Yeah, I can't drink it. It's way too sweet. Whew, man. Blow you out. Yeah. That is it for the moment. All right. People are hashtag living. Hashtag live and Hashtagging baby. live? I don't know. How, what do you, how do you, what's the, what's the I don't know. past participle of hashtag to, to, togs? I don't know. Are we ready? <coughs> All right. Ready? 
Hey folks, Dr. Joe Esposito here. I am very happy that you're with us today because we got a lot of good information today, as we always do. We're talking about the 10 things you need to eliminate in order to achieve optimum health. Now, I don't know if I'm going to get to all 10, but you don't have to do them all. And you don't have to do everything in one category. Do something. You know the song, Say Something, I'm Giving Up On You? Do something because your health is giving up on you. I just made that up. That was pretty good. Do something your health is giving up on you. And you have control of so much of your health. We said the other day that 75% of your health are your choices. 25% is genetics. And every day patients come in and they say, Dr. Joe, I have genetically high blood pressure. I have genetically high cholesterol. One in 100 people have genetically high cholesterol. 99 out of 100 can benefit dramatically and many times totally from changing their diet dropping all medications, normalizing their, their, their cholesterol. One out of 100 needs the medication. So can't blame it on mom and dad. If mom and dad had high cholesterol, and you do too, it's probably because you had the same lifestyle mom and dad had. Change your lifestyle, change your health. It's really not hard, folks. It's so easy. It's so quick. If you have a health issue, cholesterol, diabetes, high blood pressure, whatever it is, go to our website, drjoe.com, and just type in your issue, diabetes. Hit enter, and we will bring you to a show that we did on diabetes. A lot of good information out there. The website is loaded with over 3,000 hours of podcasts. So chances are, if you have a question, we've done a show on it. And if you want to send us any questions, you can send it through the website as well, drjoe.com. little bot pops up. Type in your question. Things you got to stop doing right now. Using plastic to store your food. If you're storing your food in plastic containers or drinking out of plastic bottles, Switching to safe alternatives like glass, ceramic, and stainless steel are a smart choice. Are smart choices? Is smart choices? You need to make the changes. Stop drinking out of those plastic bottles. Now, if I have to drink out of a plastic bottle, uh, I was in Las Vegas a couple of weeks ago, and um, I needed water desperately. So I grabbed a plastic bottle and I drank it. Not my best choice, but a choice at the time. Again, if you're living yourself 85 90% of your life great, 10% 10% of your life isn't, that's eh, okay. Your body's going to compensate for that. But microplastics, these are ti- tiny plastic uh, particles that are so small that you can't see them, but they're very common in bottled water. Researchers from the Department of Chemistry, State of uh, University of New York, tested 259 bottles of water. They found microplastic contamination in 93% of them. So the bottle just breaks down from heat, from touching it, from holding it, it it crinkles, those little bits of plastic getting into the body. It's unknown what health risks are posed by consuming these particles, but it is known that microplastics can act like sponges for contaminants like heavy metal, uh, organic pollutants, polychlorinated biphenols, pathogens, um, and they can harm the cells right at the cellular level. Once again, why would you take that risk when you don't have to anymore? Plastics can also leach uh, chemicals into your food. Phthalates are just one example of high production volume chemicals used frequently uh, when they make plastics. So phthalates are endocrine disrupting hormones, essentially. They get in your body and act like hormones, and they screw with your hormone system. And we are nothing but slaves to our hormones. Hormones make us male, female, happy, sad, fat, skinny. And so we don't want to be messing with the hormones with phthalates. Toxic chemical uh, to manufacture polyethylene uh, tetraphthalate plastics used for water bottles is known to leach into the water, and studies show that storing your bottles at high temperatures increases the risk of it leaching. So these chemicals can leach into the bottle, and if you hold them, crinkle them, roughhouse them, heat them, these chemicals can be released into your food. Why would you do that when you could drink out of something better? Uh, I have tea every single day. I use ceramic or stainless steel. I have a whole house water filter. I think you should too. Uh, They ain't cheap, a couple thousand dollars. But I filter every drop of water in my house. I cook, I bathe, um, toilet flushing, brush my teeth, wash my vegetables. Every drop of water in my house is filtered. I've had people come to my house and say, your water tastes different. I like it. I like the way your water tastes. And I said, it doesn't taste like anything. You've never had water that doesn't taste like anything. We've all been, especially to restaurants, where it tastes like pool water, tastes like chlorine, very toxic to the body. So if you can do it, I do recommend a water filter. 
Uh, the one I use is purelifewaterga.com. Um, that's the one I have in my house. People ask me, so you can go there. Tell them I sent you. I want you to get rid of your nonstick cookware. I've talked about this in the past. The convenience of nonstick cookware comes at a very high price. The chemicals used in the production persist in the environment, so they're there for a long time. And they're contaminating our water supplies, and that's been linked to things like developmental problems, cancer, liver damage, immune effects, thyroid problems, and more. Perfluoroalkyl and perfluoro uh, and uh, perfluoroalkyl is one of the uh, chemicals, and polyfluoro polyfluoroalkyl are two of the chemicals that are found, and it's estimated to be in the blood of more than 98% of Americans. We're exposed to it. Now, nonstick cookware is cool. I like it. It's easy to cook with. Doesn't stick, easy to clean. A couple of things you have to know about it, though. They will break down over time. Uh, you will scratch them. And if it's nonstick cookware, many times you have to season it. Did you know that? I just found that out the other day. Nonstick cookware has to be oiled and then put in an oven for like 45 minutes or an hour at a low temperature to season it so it stays nonstick. Many times they don't stay nonstick. Now, not all of them, but these are some of them. I just found this out the other day. A patient was telling me. So you can do that with stainless, uh, with cast iron as well. If you have a cast iron pot, you got to put oil in it and heat it at a very low temperature, and it'll season the pot so it doesn't stick. That's why with cast iron, you're not supposed to wash it. You're supposed to scrape it out and then put it away, use it again. So cast iron might be a better choice. If you're going to use cast iron, make sure it's made in America. If it's not made in America, it could be cheap cast iron, and that can actually leach chemicals into your body. 2015, 200 scientists from 40 countries signed something called the Madrid Statement, and that warns about home, uh, harmful effects of PFAs, the chemicals we talked about, and documented the following health risks from exposure. You ready for this list? I was shocked when I saw this list. Liver toxicity, neuro neurological issues, tumors in multiple organ systems, liver function, high cholesterol, high cholesterol from using nonstick pants. Reduced birth weight and size, decreased immune system, a decreased response to vaccines. Big news, vaccines, right? If you're going to get them, you want them to work, it can actually decrease effectiveness. Neonatal toxicity, testicular toxicity, uh, and cancers, kidney cancers, a hypothyroidism, ulcerative colitis, obesity, and reduced hormone levels and delayed puberty. All because you don't want your egg to stick to the pot. Healthier options would be ceramic. We talked about cast iron, both of which are durable, easy to clean, and completely inert, which means they won't release any harmful chemicals into your home and into your body. It's not just your body and the food. It's getting into the air. You're breathing it. I did a show a while ago on gas stoves. Gas stoves can release toxins. Those gas burns, and when get, something burns, there's always a waste product, and that can be toxic as well over time. So my house, I have a gas stove, love cooking with gas, but I have very high ceilings. So those toxic chemicals will dissipate. I always open a, I try to open a window every time I cook just to get some fresh air in as well to air things out. Another thing that you might want to consider cutting out of your life, and that's what we're talking about today, are things you need to cut out of your life, are antibacterial soaps and detergents. Now, a while ago, you might have heard that we had this viral infection going around. I don't know if you heard about it probably did. And one of the things they initially said was use antibacterial soaps to kill a virus on your hands. Well, turns out that was very, very poor advice. Excessive and liberal use of antibacterial products like household cleaners, hand sanitizers, and antibacterial cleaners are raising the risk of antimicrobial resistance in the environment. So what's happening is you're killing off the good bacteria as well as the bad bacteria. And when that happens, it has an adverse effect because the bacteria mutate. A bacteria or a virus's job is to do one thing, survive, just like your job is to survive. So what it does is it mutates, and then it's not affected by the antibacterial soaps. Much same effect using just plain old soap and water, and hand sanitizers we're talking about there too, just plain old regular soap and water. I like to use, use Castile soap. Castile soap is a natural soap. It's liquid or bar form. And I like it because it's natural. It's made with oil. Because when it comes to uh, your body, likes dissolve like. So oils will dissolve oils. 
And so it's made with natural oils, and then you rub it on, and it dissolves the oils, and it takes away the toxins. Now, it doesn't suds up. That's something that's totally useless. Soap that suds up is totally useless. Uh, it's more for effect. It doesn't have anything about the cleaning powers. So I like Castile soap. I have liquid soap in all my bathrooms at my house, in my showers. Um, I have bar soap if I need it. I travel with Castile soap. So I would recommend Castile or a natural soap and certainly not an antibacterial soap. It's this resistance, this microbial resistance has been declared one of the top 10 public health threats to humanity. Let me say that again. A top 10 health threat to humanity causing more than 700,000 deaths every year globally. The use of antibacterial soap can even cause shifts in microbial composition in your skin, and that can affect your skin health. So when these hand sanitizers were all the rage, and I'm glad they're not anymore, when the hand sanitizer were all the rage, I kept watching people do it and thinking you're killing the good bacteria, you're weakening your immune system, please stop doing it. And so uh, on our website, I guess it's still there, we actually have a recipe on how to make your own hand sanitizer. So type in hand sanitizer, I think it's still there. And it's alcohol and uh what else was in there um anyway it's on the website drjoe.com witch hazel and then i put some uh some natural essential oils in there too so that's something you can make yourself if you want to use hand sanitizer it's much safer um and again anything that comes in contact with your skin is going to get absorbed your skin is a sponge so be careful what you put on your body if you wouldn't put it in your body you shouldn't put it on your body is a good rule now i'm not saying you should eat rubbing alcohol but I want you to consider that if it's toxic to be eaten, it's toxic to be put on your body as well. Now, unless you're in a hospital setting, avoiding antibacterial soaps and detergents, including hand sanitizers, wipes, toothpaste, deodorants, and laundry detergents is a good idea. So get rid of it. Now, when it comes to laundry detergent and commercial cleaning products, I try to use the all natural ones because there's phthalates and there's chemicals uh, that are in these uh, soaps and they get absorbed into your skin. I haven't told the story in a while, but I had a roommate named Kay years ago. And Kay was great, and I had a two-story house, and we never really saw each other that much. But the washing machine was on Kay's level, washing machine and dryer. So Kay was wonderful, and if, if I put laundry in, she would fold it for, dry it and fold it for me, and it was great. And I started getting itching. I thought, where's this itching coming from? Didn't, couldn't figure out what it was. So one day I went down, and I, I took my clothes out of the dryer, and she had been using dryer sheets make my clothes feel soft dry sheets don't make it feel soft they actually just put a layer of, of like grease basically on the clothes to make it slimy and feel soft but i don't like dryer sheets so i said please don't use dryer sheets anymore she said okay itch went away so a lot of skin conditions you may have may be due to the clothes soap that you're using so try to use the ones that are non no fragrances all natural uh much better choice and they work just as well so it's not like you're going to lose quality there commercial cleaning products Got to get these out of your life. Household cleaning products commonly release volatile organic compounds that can cause asthma and respiratory diseases. So if you have asthma or respiratory problems, or if you have a kid that has these issues, and you're doing this, you're actually making the problem substantially worse. One study found women who use chemical cleaning agents had accelerated decline in lung function, which may signal a risk of long-term respiratory health. So those wonderful smells of of oceans and forests and spring flowers could be causing some real serious health issues. Phthalates, commonly found in uh, cleaning products, especially fragrant variety ones, studies have associated, uh, are associated, have shown association between phthalates and in utero and the following health conditions. So if you're pregnant, it can lead to things like ADD, adverse cognitive development, which is your thought process, poor psychomotor uh, development, other behavioral problems, lower IQ, impaired social communication. Folks, why are you doing this stuff? You're using these chemicals, uh, like dish detergent, clothes soaps and dish detergents are real easy, and, and body soaps, get rid of them. But cleaning products, sometimes the natural ones just don't work as well. And I understand that. So if you're gonna have to use a toxic chemical, these are the rules, wear gloves, Wear a face mask, open the windows in your house, spray it on, wipe it off, get away. 
Don't let this stuff come in contact with your lungs. Don't let it come in contact with your hands. Highly toxic in most cases and can cause all sorts of problems, not only in you, but if you make babies, men and women, if you make babies, it can be a problem. So natural cleaners might be considered baking soda, hydrogen peroxide, uh, liquid Castile soap. We talked about that. Essential oils. Get the natural cleaners, folks. Even if it costs a few cents more, believe me, it's worth it. Because when it comes to your health, don't get cheap. My grandfather taught me, always buy the best, it's always cheaper. And that's good advice for just about everything in life. And especially when it comes to your health care. If you have a health issue, neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, numbness, tingling, digestive issues, nutritional concerns, obesity, brain function, headaches, I strongly advise that you come see us and stop suffering needlessly. One of the big problems I find, and I've been doing this for 37 years now, patients come to us and say, Dr. Joe, A, why didn't somebody else tell me that there were alternatives to what I was getting done? And B, why didn't I do this sooner? And my answers are always, I don't know. I don't know why the doctors didn't refer you. A lot of doctors refer to us, and I think it's great. We refer out to them too. A famous man once said, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And in many cases, doctors don't know this. I told a story earlier of a gal who they wanted to put her on drugs at 22 years old because she had irritable, irritable bowel syndrome, colitis, whatever it was. And she said, I don't want to do that. I'm too young. And so I explained to her the nerves in the low back control the digestive system. And I explained to her that cutting out wheat and dairy products does wonders for digestive problems. And I explained to her her stomach can push up against her diaphragm. She said, why didn't my other doctors ever tell me this? And my answer is, I don't know. And I, I believe the answer is they don't know. They're not trained in the stuff I'm trained in. I'm not trained in their stuff. I can't do surgery. I can't prescribe medications. But we can naturally get you well and keep you well in many cases. So if you're sick and tired of being sick and tired, you'd like to make an appointment, drjoe.com is the website. In the Atlanta area, we have offices in Marietta, Duluth, Stockbridge, and West Cobb. We would love the opportunity to be your doctors. Initial visit is normally $712 for my listeners and anyone they refer. The cost is only $299 for that initial visit. That's an exam, x-rays, consultation, first treatment, going over the x-rays, complete nutrition evaluation. The x-rays alone are going to cost you more than $299 if you go anywhere else. So we would love the opportunity to find out if you have something we think we can help. And if it is, what course of treatment would be best for you? Chiropractic is the most effective, least expensive treatment for back pain. You know who I learned that from? A neurosurgeon friend of mine. We were talking one day, actually he was on my show, and he, said, and he said that. And I said, I never thought of it like that. He goes, absolutely, Joe. He says, most effective, least expensive. He says, I don't know why the whole world just doesn't go to chiropractors. I do, is what he said. So, yeah, you're missing out on a great opportunity to naturally get well and stay well. So drjoe.com, if you're ever in a car accident, please come see us immediately. The longer you wait, the harder it is to fix. The more likelihood it is for the insurance companies to give you a hard time. And even if you cause the accident, still come see us, folks. And we accept people with all insurances. Sometimes there's in-network, out-of-network coverage. Sometimes there's no coverage. We're going to work with you the best we can to make it so you can be here. DrJoe.com. Book your appointments right now. So we're talking about the 10 top things you want to avoid to get better health. And personal care products, we kind of brushed on that a little bit earlier. But personal care products often have these endocrine-disrupting hormones like phthalates, parabens, uh, tuli, uh, tulun, and neurotoxins. So these chemicals can get into the body. Very few chemicals on the market are tested for safety, even those that aren't necessarily safe. Just so you know, it's not a big thing to test these products. Part of that is because the testing, safety testing is typically done by one, one chemical at a time under laboratory conditions. So they might test 20, 50 different chemicals, and individually they're safe. But if you ever took a chemistry class, you know when you mix two things together, it creates a whole new thing. And that's where the problems come in. The way you're exposed to chemicals in combination, countless different uh, chemicals you're being exposed to, there's no way we can even test all of those. It can increase their toxicity exponentially. It's possible to use personal care products and cosmetics that may influence, your age, may influence you by your age, if you're male, if you're female, if you're in menopause, your perimenopause, along with having a baby increases your risk of baby issues. 11 chemicals have been uh, are concerned for families and in most, most cosmetics. Uh, butylated hydroxosanol, 
uh, coal tars, uh, formaldehyde, which is used as a preservative, parabens, phthalates, 1,4-dioxane, uh, polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons. Again, don't worry about the names. The names aren't important. What's important is that you avoid them at all costs. Try to get natural ke- personal care products uh, that have less chemicals in it, that are all natural, organic. Those are much better choices. And the last thing I want you to avoid in order to obtain and maintain good health is pain. If you have neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, numbness, tingling, headaches, sciatica, these are warning signs. They're telling you that there's something wrong. And people say to me all the time, Dr. Joe, I don't know what caused this. Well, it could be sitting wrong. A guy just the other day said, Dr. Joe, what do you think caused my back pain? Lifting, bending, squatting, housework, yard work, uh, raising kids, slip and fall, gardening, uh, falling down a flight of stairs, bad chair, sitting in a chair too much, uh, stress, old car seats. He goes, I get it, I get it, I get it, anything. I said, yeah, anything can cause this, almost anything. So I don't know what causes everybody's health problems. I do know that if you have a normally functioning nervous system, a normally functioning digestive system, and good nutrition, you have the, the, the basis of building a foundation to help get you well and keep you well. So if you have a health issue, don't ignore it. The longer you wait, the harder it is it's going to be to fix. Sometimes it can't be fixed. And that goes for everything. We did a show last week on cancer. Earlier detection, much higher survival rate. Back pain, neck pain, shoulder pain. Earlier detection, earlier treatment, much higher reversal rate. So if you have an issue, stop suffering needlessly. I don't understand why you're waiting to make an appointment. Because patients come to us all the time. Dr. Joe, I should have made this appointment two years, five years, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years ago. Dr. Joe, I've been following you since you were a student 40 years ago. Even then, you had this incredible insight as to how to get people well. And I've been meaning to come see you. What are you waiting for? Make an appointment right now. We have offices at Marietta, Duluth, Stockbridge, and West Covey, Atlanta area. We can usually get your appointment 24 to 48 hours. Uh, Exam, x-rays, consultation, first treatment going over the x-rays on a follow-up visit, and a complete nutrition evaluation, normally $712, and it's a deal at that. We've reduced that to $299. I know. It's crazy. The reason we do it is I want to find out if there's something you have something that we think we can help. We accept people with all insurances. Some have coverage. Some, most, most have coverage. Some don't. Either way, we work with co-pays, deductibles. We try to make it as easy as possible to be, be a patient with our doctors. Our doctors, I feel, are some of the best in the world. That's my opinion. And I don't know why you're waiting to get under treatment. With a nutrition evaluation, we even go over your diet. We recommend supplements. We recommend what to eat, what not to eat. Patients say all the time, I've never had any type of treatment like this in the world. Pieces of it, but never in one place. We're so excited to be patients here. So if you want to make an appointment, Dr. Joe, drjoe.com, we can book it right away. I want you to follow us on social media, at Dr. Joe Esposito, because we give away a lot of stuff. We post a lot of good information. But we give away. We gave away tickets to a live lecture I did a couple of weeks ago. We give away concert tickets already. We've given away uh, products. So, yeah, you want to follow us at Dr. Joe Esposito. There's no reason not to. It's free. And we post a lot of good stuff. We don't post silly stuff. We don't post pictures of cats or anything like that. We post things that are relevant. Maybe a meal. Hey, this is a vegan meal. This is how you get it. Uh, Maybe it's uh, uh, information on how to get well. Maybe it's information on uh, how to take care of your children. So, at Dr. Joe Esposito, please do that. If you're a podcast junkie, go to your podcast service and type in Dr. Joe for the health of it. Dr. Joe for the health of it. And we have hundreds of hours of podcasts there. And on our website, drjoe.com, we've got audio and video podcasts, probably 3,000 hours, somewhere around there. So the website's a great source of information. If you have any questions, send them through the website, drjoe.com. Folks, I hope to see you real soon. Got through my old tan. I didn't think I was going to do it. What do you have? What do you have? I jumped off a roof once. Do you think that caused my back pain? Absolutely not, Joe. You're Superman, and nothing could a- actually aggravate your back pain. Yes, jumping off roofs can do it, too. Yeah, it hurt. All right, do have some questions. When you were talking about water, do you think a water delivery service is good? As long as the water's tested and purified, I'd rather you just purify it yourself, because if they use spring water, there's really not a whole lot of documentation on that spring water just has to not kill people so what else all right when you were talking about chiropractic care and listing insurances somebody asked can they go through the va yes 
If the VA refers you, they even pay 100% of your visit. So get the VA to refer you, and then you, you're covered. So. All right. And somebody is asking if you've heard about the Think Dirty app. App? Yep, there's an app. I don't know what that is. Apparently, no. you can scan your products, and it tells you, oh, okay. I guess, yeah, if yeah, they I have any chemicals or anything in it. I've heard of it. I, I guess it's pretty cool. I don't know if it's. I guess you have to pay for it. I guess they're wanting to uh, know if it's worth it or not. What else? That appears to be all of the questions. All right. So one more time, this Saturday at Cobb Galleria, LiveExpo.com. If you want free tickets, use the code two two D R J O E. Before you buy the tickets. Yes. You get and then tickets. they will be free general admission tickets. Yes. Two o'clock on there. Love to have you come out. Love to shake hands, kiss babies. Be fun. If not, drjoe.com, Sunday night, 7 to 9, 7.50 a.m., 95.5 FM, or wsbradio.com. See you there.